In this video, we're going to go over five common problems that you could do if they give you a table. Now the first one, they're asking us what the rental cost is, but the key is they give the units here in dollars per square foot. And whenever you see per in math, it always means to divide. So we're just going to take the number of dollars and divide by the square feet, and that's it. But the first paragraph, it has all the info. You rent a retail space selling tablets. The space is 850 square feet, and you pay 7650 per month. In other words, we've got the dollars right there, so let's put that. And the square foot is 850, so we'll put that second. And finally, we're just going to type this in the calculator. So this is the one they give you, so let's see that. 7650 divided by 850. And it's kind of surprising it comes out to a nice number here, but 9, and that is the rental cost. In other words, it's $9 per square foot, or if you have a square that's one foot on each side, each of those guys costs exactly $9. Okay, let's check out another one. To solve this problem, we want to know which inequality or which of these symbols is correct. So let's read it first. If the employee works 30 hours this week, which inequality shows how much in sales X they must sell in order to make more than 600 this week? So we know it's going to be more than 600, so let's check out these symbols here. But the key is you could turn these each into different letters. The top one you could turn into a G, the bottom one an L. In other words, the first one's greater than, the second one is less than. And because we want to make more than 600 this week, we want to make greater than 600. So it has to be this symbol. Same thing as more than. So let's go ahead and highlight it. It could be B or it could be D. Let's get these guys. And we'll cross out the other two. Okay, next. Well, we see 30. It could be times 11 or 30 times 5 cents. But they say we work 30 hours this week. So how much does the employee earn per hour? And up top here, the employee gets $11 per hour. So that's the thing we want to multiply times 30. So automatically B, this has to be the correct answer, and that's all here. Because the last one says they only make 5 cents per hour times 30 hours, so that's no good. But finally, what about this guy here? Well, anytime that you see a percent, it's the same thing as 5 cents. So that's why that's there. And furthermore, you get 5% of all the things that you sell. So you want to multiply 5% times all of your sales, and therefore they mush them together like that. So it's got all the right stuff, and that one's good there. The next one's asking about profit. So let's see. When stocking your inventory, you buy 15 tablets that are 8 by 10 for 518 each. How much profit do you make if you sell all 15 of these? So basically, we're buying 15 tablets for 518. So we want to go ahead and multiply 15 times that guy. And we could do that with the calculator, and this is how much that'll come out to. So again, that's how much we buy the 15 tablets for. But the key is, how much do we sell them for? Well, these guys are the 8 by 10s so finally we're going to end up using the table here. So there's our 8 by 10s That's how much we sell each of those guys for. But we are selling all 15 of these. So once again, let's do 15 times 575. And that'll come out to 8625. So to find our profit, we just want to subtract these two guys. So let's do that with the calculator. 8625 minus 7770. Lucky number. And 855. So the difference between those is going to tell us our profit, and that's all for that guy. The next problem is a percent problem. If you increase your prices by 8%, how much more will someone have to pay if they buy both a 10 by 12 and a 12 by 15? In other words, they're buying both of these things, so let's go ahead and find these in the table. Well, those are right here, so therefore we want to add these two prices together. And I've already done that. That came out to 1705, so that's the total. However, we're going to increase our prices by 8%. So 
So basically we wanna find what is 8% of this, and that's how much more they're gonna to have to pay. But anytime you're doing a percent, you could always use this triangle here. Now the percent itself, that's gonna go in the bottom right, and the 1705, that's the total. Well, we have two spots available, but if it's the big thing, heavy things go in the bottom, so it's gonna go underneath here. And this is gonna represent the 8% or the smaller amount. And finally, if they're next to each other, you're gonna use multiplication here. So let's put that in. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do with the calculator, so let's see that. Now we have 1705, and we know we're multiplying by 8%, but you could just do eight cents, so let's see that. But another way to do it is 1705, and then just times eight. But this one here, the green, that is the percent, so just hit second, and then that guy. And that gives us 8%. So multiplying that, we'll get the same thing. So 136 and 40 cents, that is the part, or that represents 8%. So that's how much more someone will have to pay for these products here. Now finally, we could double check this answer. This is the beauty of the triangle. When two things are stacked, you're gonna use division. So finally, let's go ahead and do that and see if it gives us 8%. So let's clear. We got our part, 136.40, that was up top, divided by the total 1705 in the bottom, and boom. That does give us exactly 8%. So that's one way to double check. That has to be the correct answer since it fits perfectly in this triangle here. Okay, and one last one. This one's pretty quick here. We wanna find which of these has three by four dimensions. A customer uses a program that runs best with three by four dimensions. Select which of these sizes you should recommend to them. But to get these into the smallest dimensions, you're just going to simplify. Now if both numbers are even, you could just cut them in half. So half of 6, 3. Half of 8, 4. So that is a 3 by 4 screen there. The next one, same idea, they're both even. This is going to be 4, this is going to be 5, just cutting those in half. And once again, same idea, half of 10, 5. Half of 12, 6. So there's the third one. But for this last one, since 15 is odd, we can't do that. But three goes into both of these. Three goes into 12 four times. Three goes into 15 five times. So that one's a four by five. But of course, we only wanted the three by four. So just the first one. And that's the only one we're going to recommend here. So I hope this gives you a lot more confidence with a few more types of problems here. Check out my website for some extra practice as well. Let me know what questions you have, what else you want me to cover. Good luck, you got these. We'll see you in the next video. Toodles.